complete the and my 45th birthday. Sacrifice for your art. All right, next tweet. We're running. We're down to a minute. This went too fast. Broadway Central. How have the puppets changed from 2003 to 2019? They're a lot more beat up now. <laughs> you have to understand that all those puppets are built by hand. There are, there, there's no factory, there's no store to get them. Rick designed them and every puppet is built by hand. He has patterns, but of course, everything changes, you know? Uh, the, the biggest changes have occurred between uh, Off-Broadway and Broadway. Uh, the original design concept of Avenue Q's puppets was that it was sort of dingy version of Sesame Street and there were and there were uh, subdued colors and what we discovered is that the subdued colors on the su and the subdued colors of the puppets you made it hard to see so when we moved to a larger house uh, I had to redesign a bunch of stuff and we basically brightened up the color palette substantially and the two characters that went through the most redesign were Lucy and Princeton we wanted basically both of those puppets to look better uh -huh. uh, we wanted Lucy to be sexier and to look younger. She looked a little older uh, in the original incarnation of her. And um, Princeton, Princeton just went through some refinement to just try to make him look a little bit better, a little he more has handsome. He abs. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and and Trekkie's horns got bigger, and that's those are the those were the main changes. But between Broadway and now, no substantial changes. The, the designs, that's one of the things I'm most proud of. It's good, it's the good. The designs really hang in there. And hang you guys, there. unfortunately we ran out of time much sooner than I think any of us would have liked. I hate that. But can you each in like 10 seconds just tell us how Avenue Q has changed your life? Quickly, Carmen. In the fastest way possible, I guess. Uh, Don't take off all the time. Hurry up! Go to Ann, I don't know. Between my career before Avenue Q and my career after Avenue Q, is that after Avenue Q, I, everybody knew who I was. I didn't have to explain, tell my resume, or anything. It was just, oh, you're that girl from Avenue Q. Bobby Lopez. Yeah, it, it was my dream coming true. It was, it was nothing, even though I've, I've had a lot of great successes afterward, there was never any experience quite like Avenue Q because my life huh. went from being a nobody to getting the career that I wanted. Aaron Quill. Uh, it was my debut, and also it gave me a platform uh, later to write my blog. Yeah, which you should all try. There's a fantastic article that, that Aaron has written that uh, involves um, some whitewashing and uh, casting. And, yeah, Avenue people love places. to whitewash Avenue Q. And uh, you need to read it, and it's, a, it's an important <laughs> read. So look up the fairy princess. Uh, Howie. Uh, I, I always wanted to be on Sesame Street, and I always wanted to be on Broadway. I got to do them both at the same time, so that was awesome. Mr. Bruzo. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be in this room via any other path. There's no way I would have gotten to be part of this community in any other way. This was the only way I could have gotten here. I'm so grateful. You're lying. Oh, you already heard all of my stuff, so. You guys, thank you so much. I Congratulations. You I bought my apartment. apartment. Listen, that's about as high as long as you can get. Thank you guys so much. Uh, congratulations. Look for Avenue Q to open up again uh, on Mars very soon. Uh, it's a little show that could and has just been so revolutionary in changing the face of theater. So thank you all very much for that gift. Have a great day.